Today on Untapped, I want to talk about why consistency is your secret weapon. So I can't believe that in less than seven days' time, I am going to be competing in the National Sprint Triathlon Champs in Kinloch, Taupo, New Zealand. Taupo is a beautiful lake that we have here, and it's actually the size of Singapore Island, would you believe? And it just seems insane to me to think that for the last three months, I've been consistently training five to six days a week, doing exactly what my awesome coach, Nathan Martin, tells me to do. And all that training for one sprint race that should be done in less than an hour and 45 minutes if I'm on pace. So I'm going to be competing in a sprint triathlon, which is made up of three disciplines, a 750 meter swim a 20k bike, and this one does have hills, and a 5k run. And only, only in the last three to four weeks of these whole three months have I actually noticed the compound effect of all that training, which seems crazy, right? Now, if you talked to me in the first month, I potentially would have said to you, you know, I just don't really think I'm getting anywhere. I'm doing quite a bit of training. Sure, I'm building some foundations. I'm going slowly, getting some strength in there, some conditioning, but didn't really feel like I was doing that great for all the training. And the training felt quite intense because you go from sort of, I've always been an active, sporty person and I've always been pretty competitive, but three disciplines and training for those is quite different, right? Like getting in a swimming pool and starting to find some sort of form and conditioning and is totally different to then go and jump on a bicycle, or I should say a road bike, because a bicycle makes you sound like you a little bell on it, and a flag, no, on a, a fancy road bike. And then to go from that into running, I mean, it's just, that's what I love about triathlons is the multiple discipline and that you may not be strong in any of them, but that you have to improve in all those areas if you want to be a great triathlete. So. What I know to be true is that the consistency and daily habits have led to micro improvements for me that have turned into much bigger improvements as I've gotten better and adapted. So just this weekend gone, I did a full triathlon on my own, just trained on my own. I went into the ocean. I was supposed to do a 750 meter swim. I did a thousand meters and then I got out of my gear, put it in the car and I pulled my bike out and I did a 50 minute ride and I rode really fast and really hard. And then after that, I put the bike back in my car and then I ran. I did five sets of one kilometer as fast as I could with a two minute walk in between, which I seriously needed. So all up around over two hours of training in this morning. And then I treated myself to breakfast because well, a second breakfast, because that's what you do. And when I looked at my times on this app that I've been using the whole time called Training Peaks, because you want to reach your peaks and then you want to go to the next peak and the next peak, I was blown away. I hit three personal bests. It was like the fastest run time, the fastest bike time, and one of the best swims. And I was like, huh, it's only taken three months. And it's great timing because I'm heading into the main event that I've been training for next week. And why I wanted to share this with you today is that it really hit home. But the key message here is just never to give up. Don't give up when you're not seeing results. Keep going. Turn up daily. Show up. Do the work. Be consistent. And you will start to see these micro improvements, which is what I like to call them, micro improvements, micro shifts that all add up and lead to something much bigger. The era that we are in right now is all about instantaneous results. Get a thousand followers on Instagram fast, you know, like make your first million in a year. Boom. And I just really question how many people are actually getting these results so quickly in the right way. And is that going to last? To me, the stuff that lasts is when you go on a journey and you work for it. And as I said, you show up every day and you commit and you see these micro improvements that all lead to bigger and bigger improvements that eventually give you massive success and results. It doesn't have to be in triathlon. It can be in anything. I was listening to a podcast from my friend Amy Porterfield today. And you know what? She's been showing up for 10 years producing online courses, her podcast, blog content, and she has never failed to show up. Every single week she commits to produce a piece of content and send an email to her list. And that's why she has this business that's on track to hopefully do 10 million this year. I hope she hits her goal. 
And she's just all about turning up and being consistent and caring and caring and putting out the best possible content she can. So she's all about quality and consistency and continuing to do that and to show up. And it has given her a mega successful business, a community who loves and adores her because she's got staying power. You know she's going to be there in three or four years when every other person who's come through and been a social media guru is dropped off the face of the earth. And the thing that I'm really enjoying about triathlon training is it has brought back to me the power of discipline, the power of routine, of consistency, and of showing up for yourself. Because by showing up for me, I'm showing up for others in every area. I'm showing up for my business in a new and more committed way than ever. I'm showing up to my relationship with more respect, with more presence. I'm showing up to my own health with more energy and vibrancy and a few sore muscles from time to time. I'm just showing up in every area of my life with the same intensity and joy that I'm getting through triathlon training. And the interesting thing I think about this journey and why I think it relates to everybody who's going on a journey right now is along the way, I've been testing myself, right? I've been taking part in multiple events. There's something called the splash and dash. And it literally is you go for a swim in the ocean, a sort of a short swim around the same distance for my sprint try. But they started out at 400 meters, then they went to 730, then you could go to 1300 meters. And then you run out of the ocean in your wetsuit, you strip off and Then you go on the run and you literally dash along Oriental Bay, which is this beautiful beachfront that we have in Wellington. And the very first one that I did that sucked. The swim was 400 meters and that was okay. It was short. But then the run was only three kilometers and it hurt. It was like I was in the hurt locker. I looked at the photos that my friend took after and I was horrified at how pink I was in the face how sweaty I was. I don't mind being pink and sweaty, but I just looked so exhausted for a 3K run. And this was earlier on in my training, right? The next time I did it, the swim was better. The run was still hard, but a little bit better. And then I have done four now. So the fourth one that I did blew me away. The swim was choppy, but I was ready for it. I didn't actually enjoy it. And partway through the swim, I was like, why am I doing this? I'm not a triathlete. This is not fun. I want this to be fun. So I sort of grumbled through the swim and then tried to recollect and just go, look, you know, you're on track. Just keep swimming, stay consistent, stay smooth, stay your course. Don't worry about anybody else around you. Get to the shoreline and then do your run. And so I had a really good transition of taking off my wetsuit and just being in my tri suit and going for it. And on the first 500 meters of the run, I was like, I don't want to do the run. Maybe I should just start walking. Maybe I'll just cheer my friend Anna on. All these thoughts going through my head, right? But I knew that if I just stayed true to what I'd been training for, if I just pushed through that, and if I just focused on running the next 100 meters and the next 250 meters, et cetera, I would make it. And interestingly, around that time that I was like debating with my own mind, somebody running towards me who was just a runner out on the road, not part of the race, they had a t-shirt on that said mind over matter. And I was like, oh, thank you for that sign. Because at that very point, that's exactly what I needed to hear was mind over matter. I then tuned into my body, which was totally fine. It wasn't hurting. It wasn't in pain. It was strong. It was happy to run. And I realized it was all in my head. So I got talking to my brain and I said, right, you're going to pick up your pace, you're going to breathe properly, you're going to pump your arms, you're going to focus on having fun. Look, it's a gorgeous day, the ocean's sparkling, the sun's out. Look at all these people who are amazing athletes passing you like absolute machines. Just pick one of those and try and stay, you know, stay with their pace or keep them in your sights. And uh, Josh was actually there. He'd come to support. We, I'd brought the dogs into town, so he'd walked them. And now he was sitting on a bench watching me go by. And uh, I told him off later, I was like, babe, you've got to cheer for me. I was like, you're so quiet and chill and you just smile at me. But what I really needed right then was like, come on, Nat, go for it. I was like, it makes a huge difference to have one person cheer for you. It gives you this little boost. But anyway, what I noticed is it's a two lap course. So two and a half Ks times two. And you run out to the point in the harbor, um, out to the end, and it gets a little bit windier there. And then you come all the way back and then you have to do it again. And on that second lap, something, whatever happened in me, I I kept checking my awesome Garmin Phoenix watch, which is amazing. And it told me what my pace was. And I was like, hmm, it's faster than I thought. And okay, I felt slowish, but I was going faster. So it really made me pick up my momentum. I lifted my knees. I, I just thought, you know what? You've got two and a half Ks left. 
just go for it. And I, well, I didn't smash, but I totally got my best personal time. I even got under five minute per K for like 200 meters right near the end when I was like, come on, Nat, pick it up, sprint into the line, do it. And so it was one of my best runs ever. And this after getting out of the water and starting on the run thinking that I just wanted to stop. So why I'm telling you this is, you know, I think it's easier in sports to have those massive highs and lows actually happening during an event, but it also happens in business, in your career, in your relationships. And the thing that I realized is that in the moment I had every single thing that I needed at my disposal to make it through and not just to make it through, but to really do my best to bring my A game to that moment. We all do. We have it every single minute of every single day. It's about choosing your attitude. It's about mind over matter. And it's about turning up and just doing your best. And that's why I wanted to share that today. And you know, I've been on plenty of other events in the lead up over the three months where I have felt like I sucked, where I wasn't super happy, where I also got inspired. You know, I've been on this roller coaster of like sometimes, oh, that was a terrible swim. It was horrible. It was choppy. I got tons of salt water in my mouth. I panicked. I couldn't breathe. And then I looked at that and I was like, great, well, I don't want to have that experience again. So now I've experienced it. I need to go out in choppy conditions again. I need to get more confident. I hired a swim training specialist. I went out in a group in the ocean and I learned heaps of tricks to overcome that and just how common it is that people do panic and can't breathe. And it just made me feel better. I was like, oh, it's not just me. It's everybody. Um, And then I started putting myself in positions where I felt uncomfortable, where I had to really push past my limits. And I also put myself in situations where I was learning from people who were really good, who were knowledgeable, so that I wasn't in the dark as to what I wanted to achieve and how I wanted to progress. And I think, once again, this is why triathlon training has been so transformative for me this time round. Anytime I've ever played a competitive sport or done an individual pursuit, I always recognize how much you learn in the process about yourself So you learn about yourself and what your limits are or how you can push past your limits. You also start to just become a student of whatever it is that you are doing because you want to become better at it. So I've been watching lots of YouTube videos. I've been reading some books. And of course, I hired a coach because you might have seen my Tony Robbins vlog a while back where his biggest piece of advice was if you want to learn to be the best in something or if you just want to simply do your best in something, then don't learn from just anybody, learn from the best, hire the experts, hire the most amazing coaches. And so I found Nathan Martin, who's pretty close by to where I live and has done Ironman and has broken, you know, records and done really, really well in races. And this is what he lives and breathes to do is to take people on their own journey, find their next finish line. I love that. That's his tagline, find your next finish line. And I love it because what it's really saying is now you've got to hear what's your next finish line and what's your next and what's your next. It is a journey that you're going on. So he's been behind the scenes, setting my plan for me every single week using the Training Peaks app. So I just log in and I see that, okay, today is a 30 minute run. Tuesday, I have to do an hour long bike. Wednesday, I need to do this set of sort of sprints in the swimming pool. Thursday, I'm doing a double training. And I just love the fact that I just turn up and I do what he says in the app. And then it automatically records my results from my Garmin watch, which is the fanciest, most expensive watch I've ever had. But now I see why it's worth it. It's so accurate. It tells you exactly how you're progressing, exactly what your cadence is on the bike, your time on the run, everything, your altitude, the distance you've gone. It's just amazing. Um, The transition times, you can put into triathlon mode, but I digress. And so along with one, turning up and committing and learning as much as I personally can to improve, I then hired an expert or a couple of experts. And then third, I actually hired a nutritionist as well because I was starting to fade and my energy wasn't great even after all these months of training. And I realized I just wasn't fueling my body correctly before I was going out training. I was still in intermittent fasting mode and super um, eating quite lean and healthy. And I realized I actually just needed to take in more calories of the good things and eat more regularly and eat at certain times so I could fuel my body before my training and fuel it after. So that's helped immensely as well. I don't have these massive slumps after training. Um, I was getting quite lightheaded because I have low blood pressure and I'm not getting that anymore. So 
these are all things that I did to make those micro improvements and really commit to this process because it's not just about the one triathlon event next Sunday. It's about the journey that I've chosen to be on. After this, there's many more events that I want to sign up to and I'm viewing this as a long-term commitment. Like I'm wanting to really dig in and see what I am capable of accomplishing over the next four or five years. So that one day I can turn around and be a master, maybe in my even 50s, not that I'm going to be 50 in four or five years, just saying that if I stick with this for four or five years or even 10, I could potentially be a champion at 50. I could be there well before that. I do have goals and my eyes set on a few exciting goals to really improve. But right now I'm a complete novice. I'm at the start of my journey and I am so excited to see the progress and improvements that I can make to be in the best shape in my life, to be an athlete, to turn up and to continue hitting my personal bests. So my question to you, if you've been listening and if you've been enjoying this and if you've been inspired is what is your next finish line? Where do you want to personally show up in life and be your best? And what one thing can you do today to start doing that? Also, on the 10th of February in New Zealand, the 9th of Feb for you in the Northern Hemisphere, please send really awesome vibes and all your energy around 10 a.m. New Zealand time. That's around 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Just to give you an idea, I would love for universal global energy to be sent my way. Give me some, you know, mojo so that when I'm out there on the course, I can feel you guys pushing me up the hill, pushing me along in the run and accelerating through my swim stroke and hope that I have an awesome sprint triathlon race. And the reason why this race is actually important is that if I choose to, I can put in an application to be selected to represent New Zealand and Switzerland in September. Now, you have to put in an application, then you have to do a really, really good race, and if your race time is within a certain percentage of the winner in your category, they will take a number of women in the age bracket that I'm in, of 40 to 44, and you will be able to represent New Zealand later this year. That is not the reason I signed up to this race. That's like the icing on the cake if it happens. But for me, I just want to turn up, I want to do my absolute best, and I want to have fun, and I want to cross the finish line feeling like super joyous, super excited and super happy about all the training that I've done and the finish line that I've just crossed. And then I want to be focused on the next finish line because this is a journey. We're all on a journey. That's what I wanted to share today. I hope you have enjoyed listening in. I hope you have your own journey that you're on right now, whether it be personal, professional, whatever region of your life it is. I just want to say I've got your back and I am rooting for you and I want you to go out there and have the most amazing 2019 and beyond and find your finish line. Thanks for listening. You'll find the show notes for this over at nataliesisson.com forward slash 006. And I have one more little request of you. If you have been enjoying this podcast, I am trying something different this year with my podcast. Uh, and now that I've bought back Untapped, I am going completely sponsorship and advert free. And I have noticed that it takes a good 10 or so hours per week to put out content on both my podcast, my blog, my vlog, my emails. So if you are enjoying the content that I'm sharing in any way, I've now got an option for you to support the content through a small donation or a large donation or even a subscription using a really cool New Zealand startup that I have personally invested in because I think what they're doing is awesome called Press Patron. Now, Press Patron is basically out there to put quality content and journalists in the hands of their supporters. So as you probably know, media as we know it is really suffering right now. They don't get paid particularly well. Most of the best content out there is not well funded. Therefore, it doesn't ever often reach us. Instead, we get this pap and schmap and celebrity crap that Really, we just don't need to be reading. So we're filling our minds with crap because the really good investigative journalism and amazing content out there doesn't have enough funding or isn't being supported enough. Now, you've probably heard of Patreon. This is different to that, but still, I guess, under the same guise is that if you want to support quality journalism and quality content through your local papers, your favorite online platforms, um, this is the way to do it. And Press Patron is, is allowing people to say, you know what, I really enjoyed that article. I really enjoyed that piece of content. I'm going to support it. 
So if you want to show me some love and say thank you, Natalie, for turning up on your own time and spending your own money to get these pieces of content on your podcast, vlog, and blog published at your own cost with no sponsors, then here's a little something to say. I appreciate you. I would love that. So at the bottom of nataliesisson.com forward slash 006, you'll see a little support button. And I would really love for you to click on that and see what you think. One, tell me what you think of the interface of Press Patron. They've been doing some amazing work on improving it and making it as seamless as possible. And two, you know, if you support my content, I get to turn up and give you more and more and more of the right stuff and the good stuff and the stuff that matters. In next week's episode, I'm going to be talking to you all about habit stacking and how you can take one great habit and turn it into a series of fantastic habits that you will actually commit to, to improve your life. For now though, I simply want you to go out and untap yourself and live up to your potential.